I know, I know, Batman vs. Superman is not, you know, good. If you clip this video hoping or fearing that this would be another video decrying BBS as an unmitigated masterpiece and you're all just brainwashed by somebody to think that it's bad, it's not. It's not about that at all. As a matter of fact, this video is barely about Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. Boy, that title was a mouthful. The thing I'm really interested in is why people find themselves absolutely obsessed with this movie. One that has some pretty obvious flaws. Really, I can only speak for myself, so I have a confession to make. I very genuinely love this movie. Yeah, it's not a good movie. We all know this, but I just love it. And really, it comes down to the scope of it. It's a huge and ambitious movie with clear and lofty goals, and it just goes for it. It puts all caution to the wind as it tries to reach these goals. No hedging bets, no excuses, just going for it. It's what I call a big swing. You're either going to strike out or you're going to hit a home run without much middle ground. I love this analogy because in many ways, a hit and a miss look a lot alike. Obviously, there are differences between a bold and successful take on a story and Batman v Superman. Your doomsday. But there are absolutely similarities that cannot be ignored. What I want to do is use Batman v Superman as a way to explore why the ambition of storytelling can be as important as the quality, and use it as kind of a Rosetta Stone to look at some other examples. First, I should probably defend my claim that Batman v Superman is even ambitious, so uh, buckle up? I think we all know the general beats of a comic book movie, specifically one that introduces a character as iconic as Bruce Wayne. You, Mr. Wayne. Oh, uh, I just thought the bathroom was down here. I must have, that last martini was uh, too, too many, I think. And this room's upstairs. Great, I'm okay. I like those shoes. We see the life of the main character before they find their superhero identity. A tragic event pushes them to take up superheroing, which causes a villain to rise in opposition to them. They defeat the villain, which cements them as the costume hero of that particular city. Smash cut to song made for the movie, and bam! You have yourself a superhero origin story with a very specific story structure that focuses on a single character. Batman v Superman goes for something very different, instead modeling itself on the epic, a style of story with multiple characters that usually looks more like this. Obviously, I'm not comparing the quality of Batman v Superman and Lord of the Rings, but I think if you step back and you look at the amount of characters, locations, and the themes in both, you can definitely see an influence. Telling the story in this context expands what a comic book movie could be, even if the execution is less than ideal. This is what I'm talking about when I call a movie ambitious. Its goals are grand and easy to see. And that doesn't include all the universe building the movie does, trying to do and what move, what Marvel does over five years. And there's the religious subtext, delivered by the most disappointing performance in my adult life. That should be upside down. Now we know better now, don't we? The devils don't come from hell beneath us, no. Oh, they come from the sky. You just had to be a slightly more evil Zuckerberg. And you did this. And I'll never forgive you. 
Personally, I like to think about the intention of the creators with every piece of media that I consume, and that may be because I'm the kind of person who makes YouTube videos about comic book movies and boy bands, but it just informs my opinion. When I watch something like most generic action movies that have plagued theaters over the last decade, I see that there are a lot of these movies that are just made to appeal to the lowest common denominator. Personally, I'll take a sloppy attempt at something special than a well-oiled soulless romp every single time. percent of people believe in a higher power and every religion believes in some sort of messianic figure. And when there are other examples that we can look at to get more context. If we're talking about big, bold directions in storytelling, obviously another comic book property is going to dominate that discussion. So why don't we just acknowledge that and move along? Avengers! Assemble. A very obvious big swing is when the innovation in filmmaking calls attention to itself. Examples would be like Birdman with its single unbroken take, or Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity with their found footage conceit. Those are three movies with varying levels of quality, but they undoubtedly use their conceit effectively. The same cannot be said for ones like Apollo 18 or The Fourth Kind. Okay, same idea, but now let's apply it to genre. I've already referenced it, but The Lord of the Rings is this entire philosophy incarnate. We had fantasy franchises that took place in secret parts of our own world, but The Lord of the Rings really just did the damn thing, transforming an entire country in the process. A very similar thing happened in the 70s with, uh... Okay, one more step. Same idea, but apply it to story. This one's a bit muddier because it's a lot more subjective, but in my opinion, Gone Girl is an example of a story that really goes for it, not holding anything back when it came to delivering its point. Yes, I loved you, and then all we did was resent each other and try to control each other and cause each other pain. That's marriage. Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs both really hang their hat on their non-linear style, expecting the audience to keep up. That's a bold move, because there was no way of knowing if people would accept this new convention in storytelling. Luckily, I think it paid off. It's these big, bold decisions that lead to a movie feeling like the purest expression of a storyteller. But it's those same decisions that can lead to a movie feeling in over its head, I think that's okay. A bad movie is not the end of the world, and they don't necessarily have to be good to accomplish their goals. So, in the best case scenario, a movie that takes such big, bold swings increases the scope of what a genre or the art form could be. If this circle represents all the ways a crime movie has been made, Pulp Fiction, with its non-linear story structure and focus on characters, makes the circle bigger. Other movies now can take the tools created by that and tell their own stories. Which, for better or worse, did happen with Pulp Fiction. Hitmen think they're on a mission from God. It gives filmmakers more art and craft to pull from to tell their stories. But alas, more tools do not make better stories. I just can't bring myself to hate a movie with so much ambition. A movie that is just so unwilling to be easy to understand. Even if that makes it very hard to understand. One question begs another. Yes? Say what you're saying, General. It's just a camera. With superhero movies being the biggest trend at the box office, and being in a unique position of catching up to a really ambitious competing project, I'm happy the movie wanted to do something just different, or at least as different as a movie with Batman and Superman in it could be. I understand not everyone will see it this way, and that's okay, but I love this movie, because I love that it's not afraid to be what it wants to be, even if what it wants to be is a little stupid. Damn. Save Martha! Why does he do that?